All right, in this part, let's talk about variables. Variables that are the building blocks of any program that uh, we use. So you can think variables that are like baskets. They exist in the physical space, in the memory. Um, so they, their job is to hold values, to hold the data. Okay. So for each of the variables, they must have a name. This is how we refer to these variables, which is pretty obvious. You can have variable x, y, name, whatever you want to pick. In general, you can pick any name you want to. There are certain rules, but people rarely make mistakes on them. And the most important thing for variables, uh, number one, it's value. Basically, this is the data in the variable. Location. So what do you mean? If it's an x equals to seven, it basically means I have a box, I have a basket. I, I kind of give this basket a name called x. And seven is the value of this variable. So this is the value. This is the name. Sometimes people call it the identifier. Um, and then the type. The type in Python is a little bit strange because Python doesn't really force programmers to specify their types. But every data in Python has a type. It's just hidden from the programmer point of view. Um, the reason why I want to stress a little bit on types is for most other languages, types are explicit. In other words, when you create a variable, um, you must specify what the type of that variable is. In Python, we say there are three kinds of major types that we use. First thing is string. String is basically for text information. Integers are for whole numbers. And float is for decimal values. So that's kind of the, um, the difference between those three types. And later on, we're going to introduce more types like a dictionary or um, other types in here. Okay. So um, for example, for this x, we say, oh, it's an integer. It's an int. Because the value that you put into this variable dictates um, what kind of var variable it is, in a sense. When you try to assign something to a variable, we use equal sign. We call this the assignment operator. It is important that you know that this is different from math. Different from the equations in math. In math, if you say x equals y, this basically means x is the same as y. Right? So whatever y is, is the same as x. But in uh, coding, if I say x equals y, I'm not saying x is the same as y. Basically, it's a verb. It says, assign the value of y to x. Assign the value of y to x. <coughs> Excuse me, that's what it means in here. So we're not comparing well, which one uh, are those two the same. We're just saying, Whatever the value of the right-hand side, RHS stands for right-hand side, we'll assign it to the memory location to the variable on the left-hand side. Another example in here, um, for example, if I say, hey, x equals y plus 3. From the math point of view, if we say, um, if y is 10, x will be 13. If y is 20, x will be 23. So you're building up some sort of relationship. So from the math point of view, it's an equation. But for coding, this is a one-time deal. It doesn't describe any, <laughs> excuse me, any pattern in here. Um, what it does is to say, um, I'm assigning the value of y plus 3. Whatever y is, I add 3 to it. I gave it to x. That's what it is in here. So um, let's look at some examples about strings, OK? 
So when you try to manipulate strings, um, there are certain operations that are easy to use. And I want to introduce them in here. For example, I have CIC8A, I print. So this one, you can think name equals to CIC8A. You have a variable called name, it has a box, it has CSE8A. As you can see, uh, we're putting the uh, string constants in quotes. You can use single quote or double quote in um, Python, but personally, I would prefer to use double quotes um, because for almost other every other language that they always use double quotes to describe strings. If I use add in here, add in Python means concatenate. So it's going to basically link these two strings together. Hello, CSE 8A. And the correct answer in here is D because add doesn't automatically add the space for us. OK, that's one thing. So add means concatenation. Next thing, if I say, hey, name equals CSE 8A, I say, hello, plus name. Just be careful in here. If you put anything inside quotes, they become a string by themselves. What that means is this is a string. It's called name. It doesn't refer to this string variable we have above in here. So what's going to happen is it's going to say, hello, name. And it, they don't add a space in here. So it's different from what we would expect. OK. All right. Next, um, if you have name equals to Maria, position equals to best, now you have two variables, and you're con concatenating all of them together. So when you see a variable name, its value will be used in here. So Maria space is the space position is best. So Maria is the best, right? So this is the correct answer in here. Now, um, when you have multiply on strings, what it does is it's going to repeat this string this number of times. So, so, CIC 8A is so, so, so much fun, right? So, basically, this so is repeated three times. It doesn't, again, add space. So, the correct answer in here is D. We can look at um, the, um, let me, uh, you can write, you can open up um, a terminal and just write Python. If I say CSE times three, you're going to repeat CSE three times. You can also do um, three times CSE. It's going to give you the same behavior. Again, it doesn't add space. OK. So that's one thing in here. That's about the basic types of int um, string. And let, let me um, talk about float a little bit in here. So you may say x equals 3.5. And 3.5 is a float. Now x is a float. And so how do I know x is a float? You can say type x, x is a float. If it's x equals 3, now what's the type of x? x is int. So the data inside the variable dictates what kind of variable it is. Um, if I say x equals to 3 as a string, then I say, what's the type of x now? It is now a string. Okay. So those are the basic data types. Um, sometimes we want to convert from one type to the other type. We don't always do it, but sometimes we want to do it. For example, I have an integer. I want to treat it as a float. Or I have a float. I want to treat it as an integer. Sometimes I want to say I have a string, but I need to add 5 to this string. Can you help me to convert it into an int? So, there are different reasons why we want to have one type of data and we want to treat it as another kind of data. 
this is called type conversion or type cost. Just keep in mind, um, although we can do type costing, it really doesn't change the type of the value of the variable. It is again, a one-time deal that you can use to say, I have some data, you kind of treat this data as another kind for once. It's just like if you have an actor, the actor may play a tree. It's like a, you typecast this actor into a tree, but you, you don't really change that person into a tree, right? It's just a one-time deal. That's the idea of type conversion, okay? So um, for integers, um, if you do int, it's gonna convert data into int base 10. If you convert something into a float, then it's gonna convert that data into a decimal. And similarly, you can type cast something into a string. Um, Python tries to be smart. So whenever it can do the costing for you, it will try to do it. But sometimes it really doesn't make any sense for you to convert one thing to the other, then Python would crash and it will, you'll see an error. Okay, let's look at some examples in here. Um, so let me start up this terminal in here. Um, you can just open up Python just by typing in Python. Okay. Um, let's see. So I may have. Um, uh, int, so this is a, hey, convert this thing into an int. I have a string three, convert it into an int. Well, no, this is an integer. Um, you can assign x to it. For example, you can assign this result to this variable. And now you can do math. x plus four is now seven. You can't really do this, right? You, you, can, you can think about, okay, um, sorry. Three plus four, I'm expecting a seven, but you really can't do this. This is an error. You say, okay, you can only concatenate two strings. You cannot concatenate a string from with the int. So you can use int to typecast a string into an int. You can also try to typecast maybe a 3.5 into an int. Oh, 3.5 give you a three. How about if I say 3.9? It also give me a three. You can type cast a float into int. 3.0 is also three. The way that you type cast things into an int is you're gonna simply remove the decimal part. You only keep the whole number part. So it doesn't really matter if it's 3.0 or 3.9, you all end up with three. So you can type cast a, a string into an int. You can type cast a float into an int. How about this? Can I type cast this into an int? Python would give me an error and say, well, I can't really do this because if I simply remove the quote, you end up with a float. So you are not supposed to be able to typecast in this way. So you can typecast things into a, um, a int. Similarly, you can do float. Okay? Typecast this thing into a float. This will give you a decimal value. You can also typecast a three into a float. It will change it into a three dot zero. So whenever you have a dot, you change it into a float. The difference between three and three dot zero is from a, the math point of view, they are exactly the same. But from the computing perspective, they are different because the way that we use to store the uh, decimal value is different from the way we're gonna store um, whole numbers. So you're gonna learn this in future CIC classes. That's why there is a difference between float and um, int. Obviously, you can pretty much typecast anything into a string, right? All you need to do is to put a quote on it. For example, you can typecast float into a string. You can typecast an integer into a string. There's no problem. You can typecast string into a string, but what's the point, right? So. This is type casting, um, but keep in mind, you are not gonna change the type of the data you have. So what does this mean? So for example, I have a float, x is 3.4, x is a float. I say, okay, let me assign 
let me type cast x into a, a int. So y is three. Now, what's the type of x? X is like that actor. You 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 say okay. You play the role of int just for once. In fact, x it is still three dot four. X is still a float. There's no change on the original type of X. So type casting does not change the type of the original variable or data. They still maintain their old type. You're just treating the value of that variable as another type for once. Okay. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, let's think about which one of these would commonly uh, I think which of these type castings would give me errors. Let's take a look at this one, right? Um, the first thing, 420 convert into int, this one would work. It, it won't give me errors because 420 is a perfect integer. If you remove the quotes, 42, hey, 42, if you remove the quote, you get an integer. In fact, to go from integer to a float, all you need to do is add a dot. So this one would also work. This 3.14 convert into a string, just add a quote around it. That's fine. This part, we know it won't work, right? Because 1.13, if you type cast this string into a float, it's going to give you 1.13. That's fine. But if you type cast into int, there is this intermediate step. You go to first type cast this into a float, and then you type cast into int. That's fine, but not directly into int. For pi, that really doesn't make any sense to the machine. Pi is not a constant, so this one would give you an error. So the correct answer would be D. Okay, so this is a brief intro of um, types and typecast. All right, now let's talk about calling functions. So um, in this module, we're going to learn how to use some of the existing functions in Python. And also, we will learn how to create our own function. So what is a function? A function is basically a tool. You can think is it's like in real life, we use screwdrivers, we, we use clamps. Those are tools, right? So functions, they are tools in the software world. What they do is they perform a very specific task for us. Calling function is basically to say you use that tool, right? If you need to tighten the screw, you say, hey, let me get a screwdriver. And then you start to use that screwdriver to turn it clockwise to tighten that screw. And that's exactly what you are doing when you try to call a function. So Python give you a function called max. And this function would take a few things. And in here, I, I'm passing in two things that are separated by comma. We say these are the arguments to the function. In other words, they're like the screw that you are trying to tighten, right? So you provide these um, arguments to the function, and this function would do its job and the return of five. We call this thing a function call. Basically, it's, it's, it's use a function, right? So I call a function or I use a function. This function will do its job and give me a five. This is the return value of the function. The function give back something to me. And that's it. So that's kind of what a function does. And you can think about functions as small toolboxes, so long as you provide the right arguments based on the requirement of that function is going to do its job and give you the info, the correct result back. Okay. Um, so max would tell me the bigger of two things. For the length function, it tells me how many characters or how many things there are in the collection of things. If you want to figure out what's the length of a string, basically it counts how many characters there are. The length of this character of this string is five. So basically the return value of length is used as the first argument for the max function. Similarly, the length of Pao Chao, if you look at it 
the length of this is um, eight, in fact, right? So because there is a space, space is counted as a character. So how many function calls are there? There's this call for length, there's a call for length, that's two of them. And the return value of these two function calls are passed to the third function call, which is max. So there are three um, function calls in here. And what will be printed out? If I print out this, it's going to see eight. Right? So that's how you can use the two basic functions, the length of something and the max. So these are built-in tools from Python. OK. Um, we we'll also use another function that is fairly commonly used. We call this input. The input function would allow you to read something from um, the console, from the console. So for example, you say input, enter number one. Um, and whatever the input function get from the um, console would be given to num one and then similar to num two and add them up together, print out the total. If I enter 10 from in here, well, this is the prompt. So when you, this statement is executed, the prompt would be printed and whatever the user typed afterwards and then press enter will be read into number one. Okay. Let's see if we have, um, well, we don't have the exercise for this one, but if I run this code, what would you expect to see? Let me copy it. We can create a new file in here just for fun. Um, for example, I just put it into hello in here, right? So I say num1 equals that, num2 To copy it in. Single quotes, double quotes really doesn't matter for here. Num1 plus num2, and then print out total. If I now run this code, what's going to happen? Right? So, do I, if I enter 10 here and 20, do I expect to see 30? Um, let me reset the terminal. Say Python hello.py. Enter number one and say, hey, 10, and then 20. In fact, it doesn't give me 30, it gave me 10, 20. Um, the, the, the lack of spacing in here, so I had to have a space in here, it's better, it looks better. Um, and one of the, in fact, one of the problems with our students code for probably PA1, we see that sometimes people forgot spaces would matter. Like when you output something, if there is a space, you add a space. If there's no space, you shouldn't add a space. Just be careful. Formatting is important, okay? So now this one, in fact, would give me 1020. Why? It's because when reading this data, I need to typecast. I need to typecast because whatever I typed in, input would always read everything as a string. So basically num1, would have a value of 10 as a string. Num2 would have a value of 20. When you add two strings, is concatenation. That's why it's 1020. Now, how do I change it? You can use typecasting like what we learned before. So all you need to do is to say, let me typecast this in here. And then I'm doing it in here. Um, now, if you run the code, 10, 20, it should give us 30 as expected. So typecasting, whatever you read in here, typecast into int. So it's much, it's kind of is the expected behavior, right? That's what we have. All right. Um, so this is kind of how to use existing functions in Python. All right, let's do one exercise in here. 
um, we basically want to ask user what their name is and how old they are, and then we'll print out this person's age in two years. So this is an exercise. Um, we already created this file called age.py and start work on it. So first thing is I need to read in the person's age and the name. So if I read in Paul is 44 years old, in two years, Paul will be 46. Christine is 35 years old, in two years, she will be 37, right? Or Shannon is 17 years old, in two years, she will be 19. So you kind of read in these two information and you should store them into variables and then construct the result and then print them out. That's what we need to think about. And each input would allow us to read in one data. So one input for age, one input for name. So we say, okay, let's start with age equals to input. And you can put in the prompt. If you leave this empty, it just won't prompt for anything. Say, please enter your age. And then um, similarly, name equals to input. Please enter your name. Just be careful in here. When you think about age, you really want to do some math later on, right? So, but for example, if I forgot about this, the print name, comma, you can use comma to separate different fields too. If you use comma to separate them, um, Python would add a space automatically after it. So name, and then say, will be age plus two years old in two years. That's kind of something you can do here if you want to use python to add in uh the spacing for you okay let's let's try to run it you can use mark um a lot of time you can also use run but let's say um since mark would grade it um let's see um so you, you can see my code which is the um the red part if you look at it, there, the code crashed, right? So there is a problem because this age is read in as a string and I'm doing math on it. I'm in trouble. So I need to type cast it into int. Now I fix it and I will mark again. Um, the output, um, let's see. Please enter the age and then the name. Oh, so this is, I think that's about greeting, but in here, let's say run age.py. Um, py. Okay, so enter age. I'm now 90 years old. What's your name? My name is Paul. Uh, Paul will be 92 years old in two years, right? So that's kind of the expected behavior. As you can see, when I, in fact, when I enter Paul, I added a space by accident. And you can see there are, in fact, two spaces in here. One is added by Python. The other is kind of read in for the name. Um, if you say I want to concatenate them by myself, that's fine. But probably you want to parenthesize this math expression. And this would give you a very similar behavior. I'm 90 years old. My name is Paul. Um, forgot to do the typecasting because this is the integer. Now let's do it again. 90 years old. Uh, my name is Paul. And Paul will be 92 years old in two years. So you need to start adding spacings. As you can see, as you try to adjust your code, your code may not give you the right output. So you, you may need to start to adjust the spacing. If you see an error, you realize, oh, 
this part, this part is the integer. I cannot concatenate the integer. I've got to do the type casting. And I realize, oh, this there's no spacing here. There's no spacing here. I got to add in some more spacing. And you run your code again. Nine years old. My name is Paul. Now it looks okay. So there are many ways you can work on the problem, and they will give you the same output. So for beginners, you shouldn't think there is only one way to solving the problem. There are many ways for you to do it. Okay. So this is our exercise about using input, concatenations, type casting. Okay. Now, um, let's work on the part where um, we can write our own functions. Okay. So sometimes we want to write our own functions for the purpose of creating something that we need to solve our specific problem. So why do we need to define function? Um, well, it doesn't really make our code look interesting. It probably make our code easier to understand and it can be reused many, many times. So B is correct. So make our code looks more organized. Um, creating functions in our code would allow us to avoid copy paste and also contain potential errors. Because if you have to copy paste your code at different spots, if you realize that the part you are copy paste, you are copying and pasting are wrong, then you got to find out where I copy pasted these incorrect codes and change all of them. So um, avoiding copy and paste, in fact, can help us contain potential errors. Just like when you are typing in a Word document, you may say, I have this paragraph, I will copy paste it into different places. And then you realize, oops, I have a typo in this paragraph. Then you got to go to all those spots that you have pasted this paragraph in and fix that typo. Okay, so having functions avoid that potential problem. So the correct answer is D. Okay, make our code more organized and um, contain errors, potential errors. Okay. And this is how we write our own functions. First thing is the keyword is DF. It helps us to, to say, I'm defining something. You can define a class, you can define a function. Here we're defining a function. This is the name of the function. And we say, this is the parameter of the function. A function may have multiple parameters. Remember the max function, it has two things. In here, you, of your own function have as many parameters as you want to. You just need to separate them by commas. And this parameter, you can use it right away in your program. So basically I'm converting Fahrenheit into Celsius, and this is the math I'm doing. I get to the Celsius. This return statement, it means terminate the function call. There's two jobs. The first thing is to terminate the call. The second part is to give back a value. Give back whatever this thing you want to return. Okay, so you build up this function. It's like you create a small tool that is dormant, that is not being actively executed. It's just staying there. And then this is called a function call. So you're calling the function, you're actually using the function. When you call F2C, you are basically triggering the function call. This 75 is given to FH. In other words, when you call this function, 75 is given to FAH, and then the function will do its math and give a C back. Whatever this C is, is the return value of the function call. You can assign this return value to a variable. You can print it out. If you don't do anything, then this return value is just thrown away. So once you finish the call, you are coming back in here. So taking a function call is like you take a detour, do something, then come back. And then we'll continue again. You will call the function again. If you call the function again, this you're going to go to this function in here again. Now, 
FH is going to be the value of X. X is 60. So this FH would have a value of 60. Do its math, return back again. So it's like if your program is a highway, a function call is like you take a detour, like you want to grab some food, you take a detour, and then you go back to where the to the same exit, right? So it's like a highway, and then you're going to continue. And then later on, you say, hey, I need to get something again. You go there again, and then come back. It's like a detour that you can use again, again, and again. That's kind of the idea of a function, OK? So it kind of change the flow of your program. And this is better than copy pasting this one, right? So um, let me um, let me see if I can show you the uh, impact of a function. Let me see. Um, we have Tuesday. We have Tuesday in here. Um, I don't have anything here, but let, let me see. Okay, so let's write this function in here. Okay. So, so what if I don't use a function? I just want to print out, I just want to do the conversion. So I say, okay, let me do this. I say value one equals to, I'll do the math myself, times um, 75 minus 32. And then print the value one. That's it, right? And then value two equals to five divided by nine times 60 minus 32 and print out value two. If I run this code, it's gonna work just fine, right? So tell me, oh, 75 is about 23 Celsius, uh, 60 degrees, like 15, okay? No big deal. But as you can see, if later on I want to do another math, I have to write down the formula again, again, again. And this is a very simple conversion. How about if you have to do some character that takes 400 lines? You have to copy those 400 lines again, again, again. It's just problematic. And what if I made a mistake? Oh, instead of five divided by no, I, I, I have a typo of say five divided by eight. Now, all my math is wrong. If I need to fix this um, mistake, I got to find out, okay, where did I do the conversion in my code? And my code right now only have five lines. How about if I have 5,000 lines? I have to search where I have this formula, look for it, make all the changes. It's just very cumbersome. So it's much better if you say, I have to define, I have to see, and you give me the Fahrenheit. Don't forget that there's a column at the end of this header, function header, we call this the header. I just do the math, um, five divided by nine times, I'll return C, and then I'm done. Pay attention, there are indentations in here, and I can print F2C, like 75, I can print F2C 60. I can do anything I want to, I just need to call this function, right? So it's gonna give me the right answer. Let me say, what if I have a typo in here? Obviously all these answers will be wrong and I realize there's a typo. All I need to do is to change one place in my program. I don't have to change anything here. I don't have to change anything here. Then it's gonna work out just fine, okay? So this is the benefit of having our own functions and having functions make our code looks more organized and it can help us contain errors, okay? So let's, let's do some exercising here. Um, for example, I say, okay, let's write a function that computes the cube of a given number. So this function, the name is called cube. It has one parameter. It returns the cube of that number. So how do I do this? Um, 
let me define a function, right? Call this cube, takes one thing. And all I need to do is return cube, this number cube. How do I do cube? There are multiple ways. You can say this number times itself three times. That would work. Or you say cubed. This is also OK. So two asterisks means cube. That means exp exponent. So num to the exponent of three, that's cube. So now I print num, uh, sorry, cube three. This would give me nine. Print cube 20. This would me, give me like maybe 8,000, right? Print the cube of zero, which would give me zero. Um, so let's try it. Twenty-seven, eight thousand zero. So it looks good, and you can test your code any way you want to. Say, hey, what if I give you a decimal? Will this work? This is the cube of one dot four. So it all works, and this is the function. This is the function, and these are function calls that we're using to help us to help us um, test out if this function works. Right? This is a very simple function. Probably if it's this simple, maybe you don't need a function. Um, but as, as you see in our assignment, the function you are going to write are, are slightly more complicated. And it kind of makes more sense to put them into a function. Okay. Let's look at um, this example in here. Um, so I have this function called welcome. It just prints out, well, hello, whatever this name is with the exclamation mark. I said, welcome, CAC 8A. I pass this to the function. And the return value is given to this message, a print out message. What will be printed out? You may say, oh, it's going to print out hello, CAC 8A, exclamation mark. How about the return value? This function didn't return anything. Right? There is no return statement. Print and return are totally two different ideas. Print means display. It just shows something onto the console. Return, it means give a result back. Um, the analogy you can think about is if you go to UCSD, you say, I need to get my card, UCSD card. Um, print is like your name is displayed. Okay, you are number three in the line, number four in the line, you're number one in the line, right? So as you wait in line to get your ID, the print is just to display some information. Return is like you get your ID back. The ID is what return gives you. So this one just displays something. It really didn't return anything back to us. And what Python does is if a function doesn't return anything uh, using return statement, Python would return this special thing called not. That means it doesn't really give back anything. So when you print out none, it's going to show none. So the correct answer is none of them is right. The correct answer would be hello CAC 8A and then none. Message is none. OK, so when you have a function, uh, that doesn't return anything, and you assign the function call to a variable, that variable would have not in it. All right, so just be careful in here. Uh, just want to point out this behavior. Now, this exercise is similar to the assignment. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate the area of a triangle. Um, so you are given three sides, A, B, C. And then this is the formula for you to calculate the area of a triangle. If you know the length of ABC, um, if you can calculate P, P is the average, not the average, P is A plus P plus C divided by two. And then um, this is the math. So your job is to have this function um, based on the Horan's formula. Um, so how do I define this function? What would this function do? Right, this function is supposed to calculate the area of a function, uh, the area of a triangle. Now, what does this function need? 
it looks like I need ABC, the three edges, ABC. Should it take the area? It probably shouldn't take the area. It should return the area. So I would say A is the best design for the function. And we can write this function together, okay, as one of the um, exercises here, um, right? So we're going to write this function, define, I call this calc area. Give me A, B, C, separated by comma. So the first thing I need to do is I need to calculate P. P is the A plus B plus C divided by two. And now I need to return the area. The area, you can do the math, which is the square root. How do I do the square root? The power of half, right? The P times, what's the formula? P minus A times P minus B times P minus C to the power of half. That's it. So that's the function. Now I will try to test it out. I say calculate area. Um, I say three, four, five. We know the area of this is uh, six, right? Three times four is a right triangle. Three times four divided by two is six. Let's try it. Um, I'll print so to Python area.py. I didn't print out anything. How come? I'm calling this function. This function would give me a six, hopefully, but I didn't display it. So in the console, I didn't really see anything. So I need to print, forget. Okay. Run it again. Oh, give me six or zero. That looks good. Now, how about I print again? I thought about one, two, and 20. What would I expect to see on that? Ooh, it's something like this. Is this right? That doesn't look right. Why? This, in fact, is an imaginary number. It's an imaginary number. So the reason is simple because this is not a legitimate edge of a triangle. One, two, 20, because the sum of two edges for a triangle must be greater than the length of the third, right? So that's why um, this is incorrect. This is incorrect. So, and the behavior is, you give me this, this imaginary number, right? You can definitely test other numbers like 10, 20, 25, I think this one would work. If you calculate the area, it's 94. So this is how you write the function, and this is how you should test out the function. You should test your code thoroughly by yourself.